I don't care. Come on, on now. Put some key down. 13th in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be. Oh, when, when have we got leads? Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. Apologies, I forgot to add myself then. Uh, hope you're doing well. Please do smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell. Um, normally, don't go as live as early as this, but obviously, there's been some breaking news uh, that started to filter out this morning from the likes of Fabrizio Romano and other reporters, and of course, Lyle Thomas who seems to have had his finger on the pulse when it comes to the Fabio Carvalho deal. And Leeds United looks set to have missed out. Uh, it looks like he's going to be on his way to Hull City. Um, that looks like it's almost a done deal, um, which is a bit shit, but also not unexpected. Like, the thing is with... Um, with Fabio Carvalho, I think we were always going to struggle to give him the game time. And I've said this before. I said that about Leicester City. Southampton, OK, have, may have been in. But I think the thing is with Hull, they can give him the game time that he requires. Obviously, Jaden Filigy in one side, Fabio Carvalho the other one. They've got a lot of young players that they've got on loan from clubs as well. So it's a really good move for them. Liam Rossini is a, a great up-and-coming coach. He will go and learn and play every minute as well, which isn't something that he's going to get at Leeds United. You know, regardless of what you think, you can make reservations and say, listen, Carvalho is that good, that we're going to find a place for him in this side. Um, but who would he come in for? Like, thinking Dan Daniel Farker's eyes and shoes and stuff, like, where would he... Where would he fit in? Like, the facts are, he's not going to fit in because he can't play in the 10 because Rutter's going to play there. Yeah, he's not going to play out wide because you can't drop damn James. Do I think Carvalho is better than James? Yes. But you can't drop him. You, you know, it, it's just, you know, we've heard Daniel Farker say as much as, like, can't come from, back from League One or ex not getting a game at a League One level, i.e. Sonny Perkins, and expect to be in my squad. It ain't going to happen. Do you know what I mean? So as good as Carvalho is, he isn't then going to say, right, um, you know, it sends the wrong message to just say, sorry, James, you're in the bin. Um, so, yeah. And and listen, Liverpool, uh, historically, notoriously structure deals where if they don't play, you're going to pay X amount, etc. You know, uh, so, yeah, it's it's uh, something something to think about. Matt, I will be live for this. Um, I'm going to be stepping up the watch alongs again of all the other the games. I miss doing them. I know people will watch them. So I'm going to be doing them. And we've got a jam packed week, to be fair, looking at the fixtures this week, folks. Man United play Wigan tonight. Come on, come on, the Latics. So what I'll do is I'll go earlier because I think the draws at about 10 to because the game doesn't kick off till quarter past. So I'm going to go live at about 10 to 8, do the draw, then watch the game. Then straight after that, um, we've got the final word. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Carabao Cup semi-final. So Borough, Chelsea, Liverpool, Fulham. Friday, we've got Hull versus Norwich. Plus all your other content put in there as well. And then Leeds play Cardiff. So I'm going to be stepping it up big time. As I say, I want 2024 to be a big, big year for the channel. So um, got to make it. Got to make it happen. True, both have failed loans, Perkins and Fabio, so it makes sense to not go for him with Farkas stance, yeah. Uh, any more news on Conor Roberts? Not up to this point, Stephen. We will have a look around, though, but I've not seen anything this morning. Um, the main reports, as I say, are around Fabio Carvalho, what's going to happen with Charlie Creswell. Uh, we've also got Jordan Miles as well, who were set to hire. If you remember, I did a video on this a few months back now when we were first linked. Um, but let's let's start first of all with obviously the news about Fabio Carvalho. So um, here we go. This is the report on Sky Sports News. Hopefully you can make out uh, that out. Um, so exclusive from Lyle Thomas, who's got quite a few bits, um, you know, uh, right over this window. So Hull appear to have moved ahead of the race to sign Liverpool's Fabio Carvalho. Liam Rossini side are understood to have made a strong move to sign him and give him a regular starting point. I know it will frustrate people, but we can't, 
get that. And what I would say in uh, Saskal Prawak, <laughs> it's hard to say that. Um, I, I don't think we need a 10 as much anymore if Rutter's going to play there. And there's no point in us, this is my opinion, there's no point in us taking another player in Fabio Carvalho and having him usurp Rutter in that role when Rutter's our player. Do you know what I mean? So I'm I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, he he plays off the right as well, I believe, which I don't think he, he gets in ahead of James under Farker. Do I think he's better? Yes, but not nothing there. Nothing on the left back either. Nipper. We'll we'll have to wait and see. Uh, don't forget to smash a like and uh, subscribe to the channel, please, as well, folks. We're already on that road to 27k. Um, the channel's growing exponentially at the moment, so let's keep it going. Um, yeah, so back to back to this. So uh, Carvalho is understood to be enthusiastic about helping Hull cement a playoff push, uh, um, which you know they're just on the periphery. Uh, there is nothing official yet, but a clo but a move could progress quickly this week in the hope Carvalho is registered in time for Hull's next game against Norwich Friday. Well, I'm doing that watch along, so we might get to get a look at him. Um, Leicester have also been very interested, who was recalled from Leipzig, but they need to move a player on to make space in the squad. Um, Southampton are another club who have been trying to sign the former Fulham player, but are less able to assume a regular starting spot. Liverpool want Carvalho playing regularly for a side competitive in their league after he struggles for games in the Bundesliga. He has had other clubs in Germany, such as Stuttgart, keen on him, as well as Sevilla from La Liga. So that tells you the 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 uh, qualities of him. You know, he's got clubs in La Liga, top division. It Wolves were interested. I, I'd assume Fulham had a little sniff as well. Obviously, him being uh, an ex-Fulham player, of course. But it's all about game time. And look, if we're being realistic, we can't give him that game time. That he needs, and I agree with what Evie's got to say here as well. And Evie will will be on the final word um, uh, tonight as well. I know a lot of you missed it yesterday, um, but I agree as well. Like you can't say, right, Rutter, you're out, and we're going to bring in a guy in on loan. Like you know, or or me for me, the long term positioning of Rutter looks to be either off the wing inside forward vibe, Salah vibe. Obviously, he can't finish, but you know what I mean? That that kind of position or in the 10. He's not a nine for me. Um, so for us to to say to him, right, you're on your bike um, or you're going to be played out of position or played somewhere where you're not going to develop to bring in Carvalho, I'm not so sure I agree with it. Not everyone will, will carry that sentiment, but that's just my opinion. Uh, Michael Brown, the way Ailing went to, yeah, see this. I did say that. I did say you know what as well what I did right I don't know if can you see that little cut in my head there can you, can you see it I was getting some out of the freezer and I've got them plugins in the in the kitchen and there's a plug there so I've gone like this to get some out of the freezer and got up and just smashed my head off it man and I've just took my hat off and I can feel it and it's hurting so yeah it hurts when stuff like it's like standing on a plug you know just fucking headbutted a, uh, a fixture in the wall, basically. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Charlie Creswell's social media post, yeah, and he's on his way, isn't he? The thing is, for Charlie, I, I do feel sorry for him. The club doesn't fancy him, um, or not the club, uh, Daniel Farker, and he's the manager. Um, so I think that's the end for him. But the, the great thing is, is that he... Will have a host of clubs. He's, you know, Ch Charlie Creswell will have his pick of, of clubs uh, in the in the uh, championship. So it's going to be all right for um, for him, isn't it? Um, a lot of Leeds fans, obviously, maybe a little bit annoyed at us not signing Carvalho, but um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too like I, I never thought we would sign him anyway. I genuinely didn't think he'd come the championship. If I'm honest. Let alone a club that aren't even in the playoffs, but have a chance of getting in the playoffs. So fair, fair play to Hull City, fair play to Liam Rossini getting this deal over the line. It won't be cheap. Um, they'll have to play him. So regardless of form, he's got to get games. Do you know what I mean? And that's not something we can uh, we can do. Um, Stuart says, "Morning, Joe." Do you think we should lay off? Listen, I put a tweet out yesterday um, just to ask, like, at, we, at what point is it acceptable for us as a fan base to rely on him again? 
Do you know what I mean? I know it's only two in two, but when do we start to say, do you know what? We can rely on this guy. You know, we can rely on this guy. Um, Michael, we've got more than that. We've got two loan spots uh, domestically, but we've got also some in Europe. Whether or not they'd be willing to do European deals, I'm not too sure. But yes, it would free up a domestic loan as well. Uh, Fabio looks like he's on his way to Hull, should be announced this week. Um, Alan, I've said, because because Cooper's been getting games, I think Cooper will get a year extension. He wants his um, you know, his deal sorted out soon. So so I think he gets um I think he gets a year extension personally. Um but we'll 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 wait and see on that. Um but yeah, I think he gets a year extension. So And do you know what? I wouldn't mind it, but I know a lot of the fan base uh, won't. They'll be they'll be fuming. But I think you can't just replace everybody at once, can you? But that's just my opinion, though. Um, yeah, Fabrizio Romano. That's that. Uh, we've just seen. Let's have a look. Yeah, he's just retweeted that from the six um, six of Jan. So Fabrizio Romano is just. Uh, just also um, just reiterating this fact that Liverpool will decide on the best loan option for Carvalho in the next few days. Southampton, Hull City and Leeds all pushing to sign him. Wolves also asked for Fabio, but game time guarantees will be key. That was um, that was two days ago. Um, obviously, since then, Lyle Thomas has reported that he looks like he could be on his way to uh, to Hull City. So, so one to watch. Um yeah, no, Jamie, I'm not... Well, I'm, it's the same with the Cooper thing. Like, if we can guarantee we're going up, then you don't sign him. Um, but there's no guarantees with that. He's in the last six months of his deal. They have to make a decision. They have to make a decision. Um, so we'll we'll wait and see what what that decision is. Do you know what that decision is? Because it'll have to be soon. Um, look, um, I don't know what people have been saying um, contrary to this, but obviously... Um, Robin Cox is going to be leaving. Um, we know that anyway. Like I, I think there's been some confusion. Robin Cox is out of contract. He is, in an effect, no more a Legion United player. So we're not getting, you know, any sort of transfer fee sign. We don't get any of that, folks, because basically he's just signing a pre-contract agreement. That's all he's doing. They're not giving us any sort of money because he's on, at the end of this season. June, May, March, when whenever it is, his contract runs out. Um, so therefore he is free to do what he wants. So this talk of oh he's leaving permanently and all that, he, he's not our player in effect. Okay, he's still on our books, but he'll just sign a um pre-contract agreement so that when his contract ends, he's a permanent Eintracht Frankfurt player. And they'll want to get that done because he's playing well, apparently. So other clubs might come in, might they, right? So we don't get anything as part of that. I think there's been some reports or some people saying that, you know, we might get that. No, nothing. Um, at the end of the day, he's he's no longer um, he's no longer a Leeds United player. So Robin Cock, he's got, looks like he's going to be signing permanently for Eintracht Frankfurt. I'm not asked Robin Flacid, shite. He was shit for us. I can't lie. Um, I can't lie. Um, right, okay. So I do just want to um, chat about Jordan Miles. Uh, Jordan Miles obviously is uh, a recruitment guru, if you like, uh, currently at Aberdeen. Um, I did a report on this um, a few few weeks back, if you remember rightly. Um, uh, apparently, we're set to add him as part of the recruitment structure, um, but it won't be till January. Um, we're not in a, a, a big need. Um, we're not in a big need for him right now. The club clearly, obviously, he's not willing to come right now. But we have, um, we do have the likes of um, Greta Steinson, Nick Hammond, who we signed permanently. So they're 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 obviously um, they're already working on deals, right? Um, so yeah, Jordan Miles looks like he, he's going to come in. What his role will be, I'm not too sure. But what I do like is the fact that we're actually building a recruitment structure. We're still in the infancy of that, but it's not just Victor Orta. Because basically, 
Radvazani just wasn't involved towards the end. And it was just Vic Perotta and Angus Kinnear running a Premier League club. This is what I, I kept saying. You remember Premier League club on the on the outside, um, uh, League One on the inside. Now we're starting to operate like a, you know, as a proper football club. So it's important that we do things like this. Um, so... It does say Leeds investment via the 49ers has come alongside major boardroom restructuring, which obviously Jordan Miles is set to join us soon. Uh, it was reported in 2023 that Leeds had their eyes on him. If you remember, we did that that video. Provided nothing changes, Danny. The thing is with Ben, he covers a lot of Manchester United. He covers a lot of the stuff in Saudi. He's quite often over there. So things can change, right? And at Man United at the minute, you've got the old Ineos thing and all that sort of stuff. So it could change at any any point. But yeah, provisionally he's in at four o'clock. Um, so yeah, he's caught the eye of the White's hierarchy of late. Uh, Football Scotland are the ones that are reporting it, uh, which is uh, these folks here uh, basically saying that, let me just uh, zoom in. Uh, he's preparing to leave Aberdeen for Leeds, but not until the end of the window. Uh, he's the head of recruitment, Hildebat, for Ellen Road, uh, having only joined from uh, West Ham in July, which again is a, is, a, is, a, is a positive thing. I think it's a positive thing because if you've just left and already you've been headhunted by Leeds United after leaving West Ham, shows you, you you're a decent guy, right? You would imagine so. Uh, it's a bit like the... Um, Greta Steinson thing that when he was at Spurs kind of vibe, uh, we've picked him up from Spurs, right? So um, it's when they've been at other clubs, it's positive. Um, sources have told Football Scotland that Miles is expected to leave and will earn the Dons a compensation fee, but he won't leave them in the lurch during the current window as Barry Robson looks for new recruits to help him catapult the club back in to the Premiership in Scotland. Um, so, again, a little bit of loyalty there from him as well, which I, th I think is for fair enough from uh, from from Jordan Miles. Um, listen, chats of Kiefer Moore. I do um, uh, want to chat. Now, I spoke to someone yesterday. Um, again, I mean, is it ITK potentially? But um, apparently Ipswich... Southampton and potentially Sunderland might be in the final like phase for Kiefer Moore. Um, apparently he fancies Ipswich or Cardiff as well as being mentioned or even a foreign club. So I'm not too sure where we land on um, on Kiefer Moore. Um, I don't think it's a deal that will get done now either due to the re-emergence of um that man Patrick Bamford if we're being honest like um Patrick Bamford is now in form you would argue he is now in form he is now playing well so do we need to replace him right now no um but yeah that might, I'm not I'm not too fussed on signing Kiefer Moore and it's mad because it's only two games of football it is only two games of football so I should be uh yeah they do mate yeah they do um uh, Hurst, isn't it? And they need a striker that knits it all together, a bit like Pat has been with us um, over the last couple of games. But yeah, Sunderland are also keen on him. Um, Kiefer Moore, but like with Carvalho, they face strong competition for the signature. Well, we've already lost out on Carvalho. Um, look, it's Alan Nixon that's reporting it. Obviously, Darren Whitcock mentioned it as well, that Leeds, along with six other championship clubs, are interested. Um, Alan Nixon reports that Bournemouth might be willing to sell him and Sunderland are trying to put together a deal to sign him permanently. Um, let's see if they can put together the deal because that's one area of the pitch that Sunderland are lacking in, if we're being totally honest. They do not have a striker. They definitely don't have a striker. Birmingham have just signed Tony Mowbray. Maybe he could look... This is what I'm saying. When you're in this division... It's tough to get deals over the line, isn't it? It's tough to get deals over the line. Uh, this is a good point, Michael, but that's a risky take, isn't it? It's a risky take. Um, you live by the gun, you die by the gun kind of vibe. Because at the end of the day, if they do bring Kiefer Moore in, he'll want game time. He's not leaving Bournemouth for no lack of game time to come to Leeds and not have game time. Um, and we have Piro and Bamford now. So um, that's the thing. Uh, that is the uh, the the gauntlet that you run. 
Um, and we've run the gauntlet before and it hasn't worked out. Um, Leeds United winger Somerville being linked with several sides in the Premier League with Liverpool the latest. We've spoken about this. Look, I do think there's a sense of an inevitability about a deal. Not now, though. You know, he's not going anywhere now. Crescencio Somerville is not leaving Leeds United. Uh, I think if we get promoted, he doesn't leave Leeds United. If we don't, we know he's going anywhere. We're not we're not daft, do you know what I mean? It's it's inevitable. I think there's a chance we keep Rutter, even if we don't go up. Um, but Nonto, Somerville, maybe Pascal, these players, and Melier probably look to move on. I think we keep Rutter just because of the, the price we paid for him. It's a hell of a lot of money. A hell of a lot of money. Um, but listen, Miley eventually, but not now. Not now. Um, I wouldn't have thought so, mate, if I'm being totally honest. Um, writing on the wall for Creswell, according to Leeds United Live. I mean, yeah, it doesn't take a, it doesn't take a um, rocket scientist to work that out. Um, I think we seen that yesterday. Look, when I when I seen the um, when I seen the Instagram post, I'd assumed it was just a general musing, but it's the fact that his dad has done the Instagram post because he already knew at that point he wasn't in the squad. Right? It's not it's not great now. Look. He threw, it felt to me like Daniel Farker threw down the gauntlet. I've said to you about before about his on-the-ball ability and bringing it out from the back, and is he close to a road on? Probably not. Can he do what Cooper can? Probably not. I don't want to do him a disservice because he's still a young lad. But I think it felt like Farker threw down the gauntlet to Charlie. And then there's been a week since he mentioned him in the press when he's not back in the squad. So do we look at Charlie and say, is he doing enough? I'm not too sure. I would argue he is, but from what I know of Charlie, but for whatever reason, Farker doesn't fancy him. Um, but yeah, look, the last time he played, he played in that game. I think he'd have played against Salford. Yeah, he did. And then we've not seen him since. Uh, his dad's come out and said it'd be nice for him to play at some point. His dad's part of the agency or at least involved in some capacity. Charlie Creswell will leave Leeds United. If Farker's still here, he won't have a future here. So will the club listen to permanent deals? Potentially. I think they will. It depends who's going to pay. I think Leeds United would probably want about £4 million, you, you would say. Um so, yeah, Stephen says, Joe, you say it's hard to get players in this league. We are the biggest team in this league. So, um, I agree in terms of biggest team in the league. I would say that. Of course, I'm biased. But when it's loans and it's January, Stephen, you have to factor in. You have to factor in the game time. This is why they're leaving. This isn't the summer. This isn't the summer. If you're not guaranteed game time, why are you going to make that move? Because you're leaving a club on loan because you're not getting game time. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, that's what I would put down. It's not about just us having, you know, bigger clout and throwing everything at it. it you, you know, you need to be able to ensure that it's not going to set the apple cart. It's the right characters. All that sort of stuff comes into it. Uh, we did a report on this a couple of weeks back, but it's been announced now on uh, Finley Gorman's Instagram. He's left Leeds United and gone to Manchester City. Uh, there he is. Look, uh, delighted to have signed for City. Can't wait to get started. 15-year-old, um, very well thought of. It'll be interesting to see how his career develops. Would have I have preferred his career to develop at Leeds United, of course, when you've got a talent like that. but. He's decided to opt for City, uh, and that's totally fine. What can you do, folks? Um, what can you do uh, on that? Um, yeah, listen, a lot of the reports about Fabio Carvalho at the moment, uh, as we already know, he he looks like he's going to be on his way now to Hull City, um, which that's a great, it's a great, it's a great deal for him. I think in terms of the game time that he's going to get, um, we can't promise him that. And that's why he's he's made that move. Um, let's have a look. Um, 
Yeah, Finn has has moved Sunderland in for for uh, more, which we've chatted about. Um, Leeds have been linked with move for Fabio Carvalho. We know that that's done now. He's going to Hull City. The likening Carvalho to Pablo Hernandez again. It's old hat because he's now going to City. Uh, there's the Jordan Miles stuff, and I think if I'm being honest, if I have a look, uh, just on Twitter, we know Robin Cox exits it in. Um. Yeah, just having a lot. I think that's that, folks. Um, I do think that's that. Uh, Leeds United news, the latest news, anyway, rounded up. Um, as I say, we will go live if anything changes later on. Um, but as I say, at this moment in time, um, Leeds United are out of the race for Carvalho. It looks like he's, he's going to end up at Hull City. No more on Connor Roberts. No more on Josh Doig. No more on the centre-back from Harambe. We've not or Hammerby, we've we've not heard anything there. Kiefer Moore looks like he's going elsewhere, but then again, do we need him anymore with Bamford and Piro? I would argue not. Do we even need a 10 now? We need a bench option, I'm not going to lie, but um, yeah, it'd be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Just on the FA Cup, I will be live later on. I'm doing the Man United versus Wigan game. So I will be live and I'll go live early because so we can we can see the draw. Um I want Maidstone at home. I want Maidstone at home. Dick them, get through. Get through. I want a home tie. I want a home tie. 14 away. Um I want I want Maidstone at home. I want a non-league team at home. That'd be nice. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's an FA Cup final is the day after the championship final, so. They might have to move it anyway if we get FA Cup final. Uh, yeah, I'll be going live, Sam, just before. I will be there. Uh, Wrexham, good shout as well. As long as we're at home, Thomas, we need a home tie. Let's make it favourable and, and and get through. And then we can look to the fifth round. Do you know what I mean? I think Daniel Farker's going to give it a real go. And if the, if the draw's kind to us, then let's get through. Why not? I don't want to be playing City away, Newcastle away even. I want a home tie. Uh, we don't want 14, uh, 14 home ties uh, on the uh, on the fly, do we? But listen, thanks as always for watching the uh, Just Joe Football Show. Smash a like on your way out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out yesterday's post-match. If any more news drops, I will be live later on because it is still only 11 o'clock. However, I will be live at about 10 to 8. We'll do that. And then at 10 o'clock, we've got the final word. So make sure you join me for the final word later on tonight as well. Enjoy the rest of your, your day, whatever you may be doing. And I'll uh, I'll catch you in a bit. Peace out now. Leads, leads, leads.